Yes, so let's move into the worksheet number three uh, uh, from lecture number three. In lecture number three, uh, we basically discuss about Newton's three laws and also we discuss about free body diagram and also we uh, discuss about the uh, difference between mass and weight, right? In uh, mass and weight are two different quantities. Right, mass we know that we are measuring the mass by kilograms and weight we are measuring by using uh, newtons right so that's the units but mass is the uh, you can measure it as some quantity by uh, using unit of kilogram and weight is something that you have mass time uh, gravitational acceleration that is caused uh, as a that is called it as the weight. So weight we use it as force of gravity. Force of gravity is also another word for uh, weight. Force of gravity. Force of gravity is the weight that will be basically equal to mass of the object times the value of g that we discuss gravitational acceleration 9.80 meters per second squared. Now you can see uh, kilograms uh, units in here kilograms times meter per squared second this whole thing we call it as newtons that's the units newtons right so uh, now after we learn about the difference between these two we move into the three newtons laws So in simple word, what is the first law is? Uh, first law is saying that if there is an object is at rest, that object is keep resting unless you apply the force, right? So that is the first Newton law. If you have object at rest, it is staying at rest unless you pull or push it, right? And also there is a second part of that. If object is moving with constant velocity, constant velocity that object is keep moving with constant velocity unless you push it or uh, pull it then it velocity will change that is the first newton's law and second newton's law is saying that the force uh, you applied how that force is related to acceleration of the object if you have a mass m object if i apply the uh, force to this object that object has the acceleration that will be mass time acceleration will be equal to the force right that means if you double the mass you are if you apply the same force then acceleration will be half of the acceleration you had earlier if you have a smaller mass that means that will accelerate faster than the object has heavy mass right so that is the second Newton's law. And third Newton's law is saying that if we apply the force, there is always a reaction force to that. So that means if I apply the force into the object, you apply it force to the object, object will apply the force to your uh, body. There is a action and reaction force. They are equal and opposite direction but act on two different objects, act on two different objects. Okay, because of that, always we use one of that force uh, wherever your point of interest is. Basically, the object will be our point of interest. Those are three Newtons. So in addition to that, we definitely talk about the three body diagram. Free body diagram is the force diagram for the object that, that is necessary to draw it to solve the problems. Force diagram, we call it as free body diagram.
Okay, uh, that will be the summary. Uh, so now let's move into the uh, first question. Okay, so now first question uh, is given you have a solid cylinder of copper uh, metal uh, weights 100 grams. So now it's very important to understand, although it says weight 100 grams, you need to understand what is given by watching the units. So this is definitely mass is not the 100, I mean 1000 grams. Mass is 1000 grams, that means mass is actually 1 kilogram. That is what it is given, not the post, right? Uh, the dimension of the cylinder as follows, radius and height, and take Earth gravitational acceleration, as we know, and that of the moon as 1 over 6th of G uh, from this data. So first one is calculate the density of the copper. Okay. So now let's start with part A. Density, as you have done in your first experiment, density will be mass over volume mass per unit volume we call it as the density that means if you have mass in kilograms and volume in meter cube that will be the SI unit of the density uh, but uh, in uh, most of the time we use grams per centimeter cube units because that's uh, a number that we can easily compare into the standard value Okay, this is mostly used. Okay, but let's move into the calculation, mass over volume. Now, important thing is, uh, how do you find the volume, right? So to find the volume, you know that the cylinder, definitely I can draw it here, right? So cylinder has height, and also radius and volume of the cylinder, volume V equal base area and vertical height. That's the volume of the cylinder, right? So you can definitely use your numbers and calculate that one, pi. And let's use the centimeter. So radius is 2 squared and height is 10 centimeters and that will give you the answer in the volume in centimeter cube. So plug into calculator 125.6 centimeter cube. That's the volume, right? So since the mass already given, let's use the grams. Grams. This G is not 9.8. This is the symbol for the grams. Okay. And then density, we use the letter uh, rho for that, Greek letter rho. Rho is the density equal mass over volume. Let's use the lowercase since I have lowercase m. Mass over volume. So that will be 1000 over 125.6 in units, uh, grams over centimeter cube. And from this, you can calculate the density. So I have 7.96 grams over centimeter cube as density. That's the part A. Oops. Okay, now let's move into the uh, part B. Part B is asking what is the weight of the cylinder? Weight is, as we discussed, it is the force of gravity, right? Weight will be able to calculate equal force of gravity equal mass time G value. So that will be uh, let's use from uh, SI units in here. Mass is 1000 grams, that means 1 kilograms. Time G is 9.80. Your units will be in newtons. That means force of gravity will be equal to 9.80 newtons. That is the weight. 
Okay, that's the B. And now let's move into the C. C is asking, what is the mass of the cylinder if you bring this cylinder to the moon? So if you bring the, uh, the cylinder to the moon, mass does not change because mass does not have the gravitational acceleration included. Gravitational acceleration is included when you measure the weight. That means mass does not change. Mass change. So that means mass is still one kilogram or hundred or thousand grams. C and then D. Okay, what is the weight of the cylinder if you bring the cylinder to the moon? So now weight will change force of gravity. When you go to the moon, mass is, is still the same, but now your new G value, if you scroll up, you see that your moon has one sixth of g right so that means g divided by six is the gravity on the moon so now this number we have one kilogram g is 9.80 and divide by six that will give you the force of gravity of the cylinder on the moon in newtons 9.8 divided by six okay <clears throat> 1 1.63 newtons. Okay, so now next question you have is E. What is the difference between weight and force of gravity in the cylinder? E. So they are the same, right? Weight is the same as force of gravity. They are the same words. Yeah, so that will be number six. I mean E. Okay. So now let's move into the uh, second question. In the second question, a soccer player kicks a ball with the uh, 1500 newtons of force. The ball exerts a reaction force against the player foot and calculate the reaction force, which newtons. Low. So now when you kick the ball, uh, you have the force applied to the ball, that is the 15,000, right? You apply the force, here is your leg, you kick it, and you apply the force to the ball. So that is, I mean, 1500 newtons. And there is a reaction force acting on your hand, this direction by the ball, that will be again 1500 newtons, right? So I'm going to write reaction force FR is still the same force you applied, but it is acting on your foot not on the ball and this is Newton's third law. Okay, now let's move into the uh, question number three. Consider the uh, flight of helicopter uh, when lift is greater than the helicopter weight. So we have a helicopter. A bad helicopter. So now this helicopter has the lifting force, that means upward force, right? Lifting force uh, is greater than the force of gravity. Force of gravity and lifting force is greater than that. Let me draw that is uh, that vector is a little greater than the force of gravity. Lifting force is greater than the force of gravity. What can you say about the uh, flight of the helicopter. That's very simple. If upward force is greater, this is my free body diagram, then what will happen? Right? Everybody know that. It will move upward direction. Okay. 
in other way, if you have up, upward force is less than the force of gravity, it will move downward direction. Okay. So number four. So there is a slider of the 40 kilogram. If the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0 0.05, that means mu k. So we discuss about the friction uh, coefficient and friction force, right? So friction force equal friction coefficient times the normal force, but they are, can have a two different friction. One is static friction and the other one is the kinetic friction. Kinetic friction is the friction when object is in motion. Static friction is the friction when object is at rest. Okay, so keep those in mind. So now, according to the given information, this is the mass, right? Uh, we need to find the kinetic frictional force. You remember that the friction force equal kinetic case or static case. Kinetic case, it will be mu k times the normal force. So now you need to understand what actually a free body diagram is. So you have a slider. There is a force of gravity and there is a normal force, right? And in addition to that, this if the object is moving in this direction, if we apply the force in this direction, there is a friction force in opposite direction. This is the friction force you write by using these two information. That is the friction formula, okay? So now we can calculate this easily. So equal mu k point zero five, and you can definitely see normal force equal force of gravity. I'm going to write it in here in this problem. Normal force equal force of gravity since I have only two vertical forces. If it is a incline, if it is a different case, you can have a different normal force because normal force is elastic force that is depend on the problem. It's not always force of gravity. Okay. Okay. So now in this case, uh, force of gravity, you know that you can find it, right? Force of gravity equal mass of the object times g because of that this will be 0 0.05 times mass times g value. Let's plug it 0 0.05. Mass should be in kilograms. That is 40. And g value is 9.80. Your final unit seat to be newtons. After you calculate, you're going to get the friction around 20 newtons. Okay, let's move into the number five. So number five is asking, when a 10 newton object is suspended at rest by two vertical stand rope. So you have object, you have two vertical stand rope. What is the tension in the rope? So you have a force of tension in this side and also you have a force of tension in the other code. This object has force of gravity straight down, right? So now you can see force of gravity is given as Now, force of gravity is basically 10 newtons. That's why you have force of tension. So, but I actually don't want the force of gravity information. What it's given as this will be your total tension force. I'm going to write not uh, just a tension force I label. Total tension force that will be 10 newtons, right? So that means you see that I have two force in that direction. That means F total tension force is equal to twice of the tension force. Because of that, tension force will be, each tension force will be five Newton. Yeah, you can, you don't want actually the force of gravity information in here. So it's just a free body diagram uh, for the problem. Okay, so now uh, let's move into the question number six. Place a book that weighs 10 newtons on a table. What is the support force on the book? So you have 
it's asking you to draw the free body diagram also uh, because of that let's draw it okay so you have book on the table right so there is a weight that means force of gravity check the units that is actually a force 10 newton what is the support force on the book support force means what is the normal force on this book is right so that's the free body diagram as everybody understand in this case normal force is equal to force of gravity that means normal force is equal to 10 newtons Let me uh, bring this one into. Okay, let's uh, do the question in here. It's not allowing me to uh, move downward. Okay, I have considered a cart push along the track with a certain force. If the force remained the same uh, while the mass of the cart decreased into half, what should be the acceleration of the cart? Right. So now you know that the force in Newton second law force equal mass time acceleration. Now you need to uh, think actually what are the parameters that you are changing. Consider push on the track a certain force if the force remaining the same. So you are not going to change the force. Force remaining as the force. Right. Let's write down what it says. And while the mass of the car decreases into half, what will happen to the mass? Mass is going to change into mass divided by 2. What should be the acceleration? Now, what will happen to the your acceleration? That's the question is. All right. So now think from your equation. Your acceleration equal force divided by mass. That is the first case. Your new acceleration, I'm going to write new acceleration. Force does not change, but you're going to half the mass, mass over two. That means your acceleration new will be twice of the F that you had earlier. Okay, twice of the uh, twice of the F over M. That means twice of the acceleration you had earlier. Okay, uh, double. Acceleration will be double. That you can see it in here because if you lower the mass into half amount, this should be double to get the, even this decrease, when this increase, forces keep constant, right? So mass half means double the acceleration. So mass double means half the acceleration. That kind of feature is there. Okay. Okay. So now let's move into uh, next part. Question number eight. I hope that's the last one. Yes. Okay. So now question number eight. So asking uh, you, there is a box of mass is resting on the smooth horizontal surface of the uh, table, no acceleration. Determine the weight. So that's simple. The box, as we know, we can calculate the force of gravity. That will be equal to mass times the value of g. Since the mass is given 12.0 times 9.80 will give you the uh, force of gravity, right? So you can calculate it. It's around. Let me do it. So that will be one hundred seventeen point six newtons. Okay, that is part A. And now part B. It's asking find the normal force. So now normal force, since it is staying at the horizontal plane, we know that the force of gravity is downward force should be equal to the normal force. That means that will be also equal to 117.6 newtons. Normal force and force of gravity is the same in this case. Okay, And let's move into the C. 
So draw the free body diagram. So you have an object, right? So there is an applied force, right? And then in addition to that, there is a force of gravity and there is a normal force that you're going to draw. So you have normal force and you have force of gravity. Let me see that object is at rest or something. Okay, there is no smooth horizontal surface. Resting, right? Resting means there is no applied force either. So let's erase that now. So that will be the free body diagram, right? And then part D. Part D asking, now you push the box right with the force of 100 newtons. Explain what will happen and calculate the acceleration of the box. So now your free body diagram has the force you applied, right? So there is no asking you to draw it, but what is happening is you have force of gravity. You have normal force. Now you're going to apply the force. If applied, that is the force 100 Newton given, and also it says no friction in that part, right? So now we need to find the acceleration. So now we're going to write force equal mass time acceleration towards the direction of x. It's very important that you label your directional information. This is x direction, this is y direction. That means anything I measure into the x direction is positive towards y direction is positive. If they are in opposite direction, any pause, then it will be a negative. So I'm going to write it for the x direction. X direction, I have only applied force and mass and acceleration towards x direction is a. It's asking us to calculate the acceleration that will be applied force divided by mass. Okay, applied force is 100 newtons and mass was 12 kilograms. Okay, 12 kilograms. Sorry, that um, 12 kilograms. Let me... Twelve kilograms. Okay, so now your acceleration will be units of meter per second squared, but you have eight point three arms. Eight point three meters per second squared. That is the acceleration in which direction? It is in x direction. You can write it in positive x direction because all the vectors should have the directional information positive x direction okay that is your part d okay so now let's move into the next part e e what is e saying e make it small e consider static friction coefficient as 0.5 and kinetic friction coefficient as 0.3 as you see static is greater always Calculate the static, static friction force and kinetic friction force. Very simple. The static friction force will be able to calculate by using static friction coefficient and the normal force, right? So since we have static friction coefficient mu s and normal force in this case, force of gravity, we know how to write the force of gravity mu s and force of gravity is m and the g. So now time to plug the values. Static friction is 0.5 and mass is 12 kilograms in SI unit and G is 9.80. And then you're going to get the static friction force as this number. Okay, so times. 58.8. Okay, that is static and also you can calculate the kinetic uh, uh, force, right? So kinetic 
friction force similar way nothing changed only thing will change is mu s will turn into friction kinetic will be equal to mu k kinetic times normal force right so now since we have normal force actually you can plug directly you don't want uh, the rest so mu s and mu k sorry mu k times mg so that will be since you have a normal force in the above you see 117.6 you can times the uh, point 0.3 right so 35.3 That is your kinetic friction uh, force. Okay, so now uh, last part, E and F. F. Okay, what is F is saying? Now you push the box right with the 100 newtons on frictional surface. Explain what will happen the motion of the box by comparing answer to the D. What is the D is D exactly same friction without friction. F is exactly same friction with friction. Now what will happen? Because of the friction, you know that object slow down. Friction will slow down the object. Friction is basically friction is resistant to the object. motion right so that means object will slow down that means acceleration in new case is actually less than the acceleration you found in part d if you want you can calculate the acceleration actually Okay. okay, that's it for this worksheet.